Uh, hi, this is Richard. Most of you know me. Um, founder, Chief Exec of the Managing Partners Forum. And very proud to be starting off, the starting gun, if you like, for the 22nd year with the International Management Excellence Awards. What's special about these awards is that they recognize the contribution of leadership and management to the business of professional services firms based worldwide. And how it works is there's uh, submissions are made by the end of next month, and then there's rigorous independent evaluation of initiatives which demonstrate either superior business practices, support to clients, or community engagement. And you'll hear in a minute from Andrew Headley, who is the chair of judges, as to how they go about their evaluation. And as some of you may be aware, the awards are a joint venture of two associations, the Managing Partners Forum and the PM Forum. Um, 22 years on, uh, what's changed? Uh, in a way, it's rather sad that we still got broadly the same theme, which is that the role of management is not still, in my view, given the recognition that it deserves by those who are in the front line of their respective professional firms. So what we therefore look for is to try and encourage them to respect and recognize that contribution because there's some interesting evidence from particularly the Office of National Statistics that well-managed firms are more productive. There's the need to grow and productivity is a fundamental element of growth. So in looking at well-managed firms, I think we are very much in the right place. If you look around, it's probably one of the coldest days of the year, and yet we're in Dubai. If you're not familiar with the skyla uh, with the image, and I'd like to thank um, Ian Beveridge for having put together such a wonderful backdrop, which we will be using in the awards ceremony, which take place on the 20th of June, and hopefully that will be a little bit warmer than today. And um, we will be then hopefully hosting you and others and finding some amazing winners. This is now the third year we will have done the awards online. And there are a number of different reasons associated with that. We find that there's less time commitment for people, um, that the ceremony is far more accessible, particularly for those based outside the UK. And we always get lots of interest from outside the UK. Um, emissions can come to thaw, lower costs. And um, I think the main thing from my personal point of view is the ability to actually organize really in-depth questions for uh, the winners. I know some here are here today from firms that have won in the past. And those questions would be very difficult in a busy room. But when you've got five minutes talking to somebody uh, with some prepared questions, which they haven't seen about how they've won and they feel all amazing about having won, you get some really interesting, insightful responses, which we then obviously make aware available to everybody. For those that haven't been through it, um, the way we approach it is through themes. We have three themes. And the first one is about making your business more productive, which we call the business theme. The second is helping your clients be more productive, which is the client theme. And thirdly, enabling your community to flourish, which is the community theme. And what we do is we try and make sure that they, each theme is deliberately broad enough to allow freedom for you and for anybody who's entering, putting together a submission to select an initiative that actually does cross across some of the internal boundaries that we typically find in most professional firms. What I would say, and I'm sure Andrew will repeat this, is the need to be specific rather than talk about general enhancements. In the guidelines, which are available on the site, and if you haven't downloaded them, have a look, please, please do, uh, you'll find that we've given some, what do we call indicative categories. In other words, these are the sort of subcategories that we would expect to emerge based on historic patterns patterns but we're not asking you to apply for a particular category we're asking you to apply for a particular theme but each entry can only be or each initiative can only be for one theme and i'd like to hand over to andrew headley who is your chair of judges to talk a little bit about the valuable work that they do in order to come up with worthy winners over to you andrew just to be here uh, i'm andrew headley i'm the, the chair of judges and just by by, by way of background and by the history around my involvement with, with the awards. I, I've been a judge since 2005, so not quite the full sort of 22 years, but sort of getting on for 20, 20 anniversary next year. And I've been the chair since, since 2017. I guess over that period, what I've seen is, has, has been the development of the awards and the development of the, you know, of the submissions and the, the quality has risen year on year, the amount of thought that goes into the, the submissions, uh, the rigor, 
uh, in the way in which people have approached it, in which both firms have approached it, but also the rigor in which in which the, which the judging process works, and how the whole thing's evolved over the, over that period. What I want to talk about today, if I can, is 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 the process, the judging process, and how we do that to give you confidence that this is you know something which is which is done in a measured and consistent and objective way, and also just talk a little bit about the six judging criteria that that we apply. So really. Our objective is, as a judging panel, uh, and you'll see from the website, there's a, there's a panel, a, a, a quite a large panel of judges, and there's a reason for that, which I'll come to in a second, is that we have a process that's, that's credible, that's rigorous, and that's forensic in nature. Uh, and generally, there are four judges for each category, hence this, the size of the panel. There's certainly a minimum of three uh, judges per category. Uh, that's, that's important for a number of reasons. One is, is that it gives us a, a diversity of view and a range of experiences. Um, the judges are all subject matter experts in the category that they're judging, and they understand the world that you live in, the world of the topics that, that they're judging. And uh, our process is that each, each judge scores independently uh, based on a consistent template on a platform that's provided by Richard and, and the MPF. Um, and they do that independently, and then they, they come together, they meet. To, to discuss, to debate, to give each other a sort of healthy challenge, and ultimately to create a consensus, a strong consensus on the winner, and you know, if appropriate, any highly recommended or highly commended uh, entries as well. Having done that, so we've got a, if you like, a nominated winner for each category. The judging panel as a whole then meets, uh, and each category presents to the wider panel, you know, its uh, its 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 judgment, its rationale. Uh, covers the entries, discusses, debates, and ultimately the panel ratifies the decisions of, of the category judges. Uh, that gives us confidence, uh, a lot of confidence, that this is an objective process, it's independent, uh, it's forensic, and it gives us the best possible opportunity you know, to, to, to reach the right, the right decisions. Um, there, there are six judging criteria that we apply. That The first is strategic alignment, and you know, those of you who've Read Jim Collins, you know, good, good to great, built to last. You know, one of his famous sayings is that, you know, great strategy is is one percent vision, ninety nine percent alignment. So one of the things we're looking for there is, is is demonstrable strategic alignment, with the objectives of the of the organisation uh, and with with, it, with its wider its wider strategy. Um, the second the second criteria is that there's active leadership involvement. You know, we need we need leadership sponsorship. Um, and again, thinking about why that's important, you know, if you think about sort of any change process and fundamentally, all of these things will be about bringing about change within your organizations. When we think about the work of someone like John Cotter and, you know, his first, his first book, Leading Change, you know, he, he would say, he does say, it's called leading change for a reason. It's not called managing change. It's leading change because that's what leaders do. So we, we really want to see some active leadership involvement, some leadership sponsorship of, of the initiative. The third, the third uh, criteria is the extent of innovation. And of course, innovation, it might be service innovation, market innovation, and methodologies, and systems, it might be tech, but let's not think it has to be tech, by, by no means must it. Because really innovation is about doing something differently and doing something better. So let's demonstrate that innovation in terms of the entries. Uh, fourth criteria, uh, Education stakeholders. So how do we engage? How do we engage with our stakeholders? How do we build consensus and how do we give effect to the change that we want to see? Fifth is all around positive impact. So how do we demonstrate how what we're doing has affected the experience of our clients, our people, our stakeholders more generally, the communities in which we exist? So where's the positive impact evidence of the of the submission? And finally, you know, where's the measurable impact? And I guess it's important here because the evidence is key. So, you know, we want to see proof points. We want to see, you know, what KPIs was set at the start, you know, how the how, how the initiative has performed against those KPIs. There may be leading indicators, lagging indicators, but across all criteria, proof points are key. So how do we show that we've achieved our objectives and how do we provide evidence on which we base our submissions. Um, in the past, I look back, you know, we've had some fantastic entries. Some of them have been fantastic narratives, 
which have de demonstrated excellent logic and, and strategies. However, you know, these awards are actually for what we've done. So it's really important that we, as well as walking the walk, we also talk the talk. Uh, so please make sure that there are plenty of proof points that demonstrate the success of, 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 what, you've, of what you've done. Um, that concludes what I'd like to say. Uh, I'm really looking forward to receiving entries from a, you know, a very wide, diverse range of firms. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that whole judging process again in 2024. Uh, Richard, over to you. And now perhaps the more practical aspects of it. Um, I mentioned, I think, earlier that the uh, theme-based approach means that the submission form is actually quite simple in that sense that you don't have to go through and select a category and then adjust your narrative to suit that category. Um, you've actually got something much broader than that, contribution to business, contribution to clients, contribution to community. Um, the form itself uh, you will find in the uh, hard uh, soft copy, if you like, uh, on the guidelines, which you can download. And then it's a then uh, the actual entry is done through an online system and what our general advice is is to actually work with the paper copy which is a word document um, and work through that and then share it with whoever's going to sign off your entry um, because uh, it's much better to get that absolutely ready and then upload it um, and that takes probably a minute it's not long um, when the uh, when you feel you're happy with that submission uh, I mentioned that you do need to find somebody who's going to be your uh, ref your support you also will probably need to find somebody who's going to be a referee or who's going to be able to give an opinion on your submission and what we find sometimes is that firms who leave that external validation uh, to the end struggle to get somebody at the at the, the last minute. So we would encourage you to think about who those uh, referees uh, are and then approach them earlier in the process. The submissions are due in at the end of next month, at the end of February. Um, we then have about a month when um, Andrew and I look at all the entries and we, we go through, through them for what I call an initial sift for quality. Uh, shortlists are then issued i think the 31st of march is easter this year so it will be probably uh, about first in the first week of april perhaps the 10th something like that and um and then the ceremony as i mentioned earlier takes place on the 20th of june and it'll be in exactly the same uh location as we are at the moment but it will be a separate link and we'll obviously share that with the people who decide to to enter there is a cost involved with each entry which is 250 pounds um and if you like that's going towards the cost of setting up the awards because if you don't have a dinner which is where most awards make most of their uh, contribution then clearly we have to look through a different route and there is a i think it's 199 or words that effect modest uh, cost for each person who joins the uh, ceremony but tables can be booked up to 10, I think, or possibly even more. That very much feels like a group of people that you know chatting together. So certainly bring guests who I suspect will be quite impressed at the, the venue, which is a bit different than your typical Zoom breakout room. Look forward to your entries like Andrew. Bye for now.